Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can apply formatting to a shape, you need to click it to select it. If selecting a text box or word art as a shape, ensure that you click on its border so that the border appears as a solid, not dashed line. That indicates that the shape itself has been selected. Once the shape has been selected, you will see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected shape. At the end of the Format tab, in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab, is the Insert Shapes button group. The large scroll box within this button group contains the shapes that you can insert and it functions in the exact way that the Shapes button on the Insert tab does. To the right of that are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape and the Draw Text Box buttons. For shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the Scribble Shape, you can click the Edit Shape button and then select the Edit Points command from the drop-down menu to display the editing points of the selected shape. You can then click and drag the points that are shown in order to change the contours of sele the selected shape. You can click the Draw Text Box button to draw a text box in your document. This button functions the same way as the Draw Text Box button that you can select from the Text Box button on the Insert tab in the ribbon. In the Shape Styles button group, you can make stylistic changes to the selected shape that change the appearance of the fill and line of the selected shape. You can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of preset shape appearances and click on one that you would like to apply to your shape if desired. You can also use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to customize the appearance of a selected shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down button to fill the inside of a selected shape with one of the many colors, pictures, gradients, or textures available. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as lines and arrows. To select a fill color, click on one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Fill Colors command in order to open the colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. You can either click the Standard tab, and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab, and then select the color you want from the Rainbow Gradient. At the bottom of both tabs, you can use the Transparency slider to set the level of color transparency. Once you make your choice, you can click the OK button to apply the color. Note that if you did apply a fill effect to a shape, and then wish to remove it, you can select the No Fill command in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu in order to remove any fill effect. You can also insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect. To do this, choose the Picture command. Here you can navigate to and then select the picture that you want to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. You can also select a gradient as a fill effect. Navigate to which gradient you would like under the preset gradients, or click the More Gradients button. If you want to add a texture to your shape, then choose the Texture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu, and then click on a texture that you want to apply from the choices shown in the side menu. Back in the Shape Styles group, you will find the Shape Outline drop-down button. The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line or the arrow shape. If you click the Shape Outline button, you can select a color shown in the color palette of choices to change the line color of your selected shape. 
To remove a line color, select the No Outline choice from the Shape Outline Buttons drop-down menu. To change the width of your shape's outline, make a selection from the side menu of choices that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Dashes command. If you are formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, you can change the endpoints of the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Arrows command. Since our shape is not an arrow, this will be grayed out. You can click the Shape Effects button to see the different shape effects that you can apply to your shape. They are grouped by category. Simply roll over the desired category within the drop-down menu and then click on the desired category setting in the side menu that appears. If you have WordArt or a text box selected, you can apply the style settings shown in the WordArt Styles button group. You can select the desired word art style from the listing shown in the scroll box. You can click the Text Fill drop-down button to select a fill effect for the text within the text box or word art from the drop-down menu. The choices displayed here are the exact same choices you have when you click the Shape Fill button in the Shape Styles group. You can click the Text Outline drop-down button to select an outline effect for the text within the selected text box or word art from the drop-down menu. You can click the Text Effects drop-down button to select a special effect for the text within a selected text box or word art from this drop-down menu. The choices displayed here are the exact same choices you have when you click the Shape Effects button in the Shape Styles group. You can click the Text Direction drop-down button to select a direction for the text to flow within a selected word art or text box from the drop-down menu that appears. You can click the Align Text drop-down to select a side of the word art or text box to which you want to align the text. You can also click the Create Link button to create a link between the text contained in two text boxes. To use this feature, you must have at least two text boxes within your document, and the text box that will catch the overflow text from the first text box must be empty. You then select the first text box and click the Create Link button. Your mouse pointer will appear as a picture when you hold it over the document. You then click on an empty or blank text box that will then display any overflow text from the first text box. Then you can type your text into the first text box and when it can no longer display the text, the overflow will then appear within the link text box as a continuation. This allows you to create multiple text box articles within a customizable layout in your Word document. Note that if you click this button and then change your mind, you can, clip, you can click the Escape key on your keyboard to cancel the linking. The buttons shown in the Arrange group display the same options when formatting pictures. In the Arrange button group, you will find buttons that sh allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected shape. You can click the Position button to select a preset placement option for the selected shape. You can click the Wrap Text drop-down to select a preset text wrapping option for the selected shape. If you have overlapping shapes in your document, then you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward buttons to change the order in which the shapes overlap each other within the stack of shapes. You can click the Selection Pane button to show and hide the selection pane in Word. This pane shows selectable objects within a document. You can click the Align button to choose from one of the available alignment options. The Group button is used if you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document. In this case, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. Note that you can also take a shape that has been grouped together and click the Group drop-down button to display a menu of choices. 
you can then select the ongroup command to break the shapes back into their separate components. Finally, you can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected shape in your document. Also, you can use the Size button group to resize a selected shape. Simply use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the Shape Height or Shape Width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.